Welcome back to Take Refuge 3D with me, Peter, and welcome if you're new. So, retopology for many of us is a necessary evil. It's time consuming, it's monotonous, and it takes us away from making our beautiful artworks. So, with all of that in mind, I made a plugin for Blender that tries to resolve at least some of the pain, specifically in regards to hard surface models that can often end up Angon based if they've come in from CAD software or whether it's from a Boolean workflow. Manually retopologizing these can be an absolute nightmare. Merging verts to create quads and triangles and that's even before you start to prepare them for export to your favorite texturing package or game engine. As I've been developing this plugin, I've made a few different videos on what Angon Pro and Angon is um, and also how it works. But what I haven't done is talk about all of this in one concise video. So I aim on rectifying that today. So what is Angon Pro? Now, just before we get into what Angon Pro is, um, I will be participating in the Blender Market black friday through to cyber monday sale from november 24 to 27 i think it's called the cyber sale or something along those lines now what is angon pro angon pro is a set of tools to expedite the process of getting a mesh in particular angon based hard surface meshes but pretty much any mesh and prepare these for export, these are all things that can be done in vanilla Blender but take up time. And in my daily workflow, I found myself increasingly annoyed with having to do these tasks over and over again, especially the process of exporting from CAD software such as plasticity, then having to go through multiple actions to prepare low poly and high poly names then correctly UV them and export them, which is why I created this plugin for Blender, basically for my own use, but I decided to put it up online and uh, people seem to like it. So I've continued to add to it. Um, now, mentioning what it is, what I should also mention is what Ngon Pro is not. So. There's not only one way of doing things, there's many, many ways to skin a cat, as they say, and there's hundreds of ways to achieve a result. As such, Engon Pro is aimed at finding the sweet spot between speed and quality. It's mostly suited to hard surface assets from CAD software and the Boolean workflow in poly modeling. It's great for quickly processing assets and being relatively an automated process and non-destructive. It's not, however, a replacement for manual retopology or an algorithm based retopology like quad remesher or Z remesher from ZBrush, although it can be used in conjunction with those tools if you want to further optimize a mesh after the fact. So, with Ngon Pro, uh, we'll get into it. There's a lot you can do. So, We'll just go through everything one by one. So you can create a low poly triangulated mesh from an Ngon or quad based mesh. And it does its best to confirm the original surface normal to reduce artifacts. In some cases, it can improve the overall surface and remove pre-existing artifacts. Occasionally, though, it does the opposite. And you can create vertex groups um, on one of the modifiers to exclude those areas if needed so that it'll be on the data transfer modifier and then it, when you click this button it creates the low poly and it also creates a low poly group where all your low poly assets will go or a collection rather you can create a high poly which does the exact same thing but without decimating the mesh um, and the reason the purpose for that is to um, triangulate your Ngon. We'll turn the wireframe on. You can see that this is an Ngon based mesh with uh, lots of funny Ngons all over the place. Um, so when you create a high poly, you want it to be tri based because when you take it into something like Marmoset or Substance Painter, it can end up with artifacts and holes in the mesh can get covered up and it's just a horrible experience. Um, and this will also create a collection for the high poly meshes. Um, you can 
uh, rotate your object if needed. So if you import something, um, for example, like this, um, it comes in as a different angle because it came in from a different software. So uh, in Blender, we're Z up and other softwares, they have Y up. So you can just click this to rotate it. And that's great. We'll just get rid of that for now. And we've got the renaming of um, uh, the object. So you can simply type in this box and you can click create. Okay. And then you can rename it and you'll notice over here, solid three million and four turns into crate. Okay. Now, when you create a low poly, it will automatically add the underscore low suffix as well. Okay. So you can go crate low poly. And then, um, yeah, that, that does that. Now, if you're not wanting to use these and you're just wanting to rename low or high, you can type your name in that box and you can just click that and it will add that suffix for you. So that's one thing that you can do. So um, that's all fun and well. So then next we've got some basic UV tools. So um, you can work in these from object mode. So if we open up our UVs now, we'll see there's nothing. So if we do uh, smart UV unwrapping combine, okay, we've clicked that. Now, if we open it up, we can see that there is UVs. You can also use this for multiple objects. So um, if we just select both of those and it's, it's done both. So um, that's pretty much self-explanatory. You can change the UV angle depending on your object. And I've also just included a cube project UV. I know you can press U. Also, this is a non-destructive workflow. So we've got um, a button to remove all the modifiers and backups because it creates backups of all of your meshes. And it also creates another, a second backup for the data transfer of surface normals. So you can remove those and then you can remove the suffix from the active. And if there's any text, on there like let's say it was called crate um dot zero zero one and we rename that and then you can just type into here dot zero zero one um and remove the text because sometimes you get that from um duplicating objects okay and there's also this panel here which i've gone through on another video but this is basically if you're working with super high poly um stuff like from photogrammetry or sculpting software and you quickly want to use Engon to um, uh, create a low poly uh, or a high poly well, you wouldn't really create a high poly but create a low poly for your mesh um, I've just exposed some of the tools that you usually find um, in here so um, for example um, color attributes you can convert the color attribute for export for your high polys um, which makes the vertex colors of your object if you've got them baked in um, recognized by more software um, sometimes you have issues with that exporting from blender and it's not always uh, straightforward depending on um, whether it's an obj or an fbx as well um, and then just exposed some of the um, remesh uh stuff that you would the basics that you would use um if you we hover over here uh uh yeah so basically these are just some of the stuff that's down here in the voxel remesh um it's just exposed on the end panel so you don't have to go digging for it uh you'd probably lose use these less often with um Engon Pro you might use a different workflow but I've included them here because I have found that especially like when I'm photo scanning fruit and stuff like that um this is this is great okay so let's have a little demo so let's um while we've got our wireframe turned on let's just duplicate this object and you can see we've got create crate 001 okay and create so we're going to make the low poly from this one we'll just hide that one first so we'll create our low poly and just watch what happens to the the wireframe okay so we have gone from having all engons to a low poly 
Now, if we turn our wireframe off, you'll see that it more or less looks the same as it did before. You might find a couple of artifacts, but that's okay because there's two things. If you're just wanting to keep this as a low poly and you don't want to bake a high poly, you can just mess with your um, decimate modifier here to get back what you wanted. But because we'll be baking details in, I find 0 0.35 or just over a third of the original um, triangulated poly count um, is what we'll see here. Now what we've got here as well, because this is non-destructive, we can see that before we've added any modifiers, we've got um, 56,852 vertices. Now, especially when you've exported something, you might find that there are some doubles. So if you just go, and this is the number before the modifiers are on. So you can probably see the real number down there. It's 39,791. So if we go and merge selected vertices, we can see that we will probably remove some. So yeah, it removed about, looks like close to 6,000 vertices. And this has brought this down to 36,550. Okay, so no double verts now. Okay, so now we can see our original here. And, and um, if we look at our wireframe, that's what we've got there. So non-destructive so far now we've got create 001 over here okay we can just create high poly okay and that's and then we can remove the text actually we should have done that first but we can remove the text on that and there you go so we've got our high poly now so that's basically the workflow and you can see the wireframe here for the high poly versus the original. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy. So if we'd had to do all of this, if we'd had to do all of this, it would have taken us um, a really long time. And I was talking and going through this slowly and explaining it, and it only took us a couple of minutes. So um, you can understand that if you had to process a lot of meshes, or you know your you had a big giant um mechanical piece with lots of individual parts you could understand how this could really speed up your workflow so uh with our crate low we do need to make sure it's unwrapped properly so we can just click our cube project uh sorry our smart uv unwrap and combine okay open it up if you've got a packer you can use the blender packer i like to use um, I like to use UV Packmaster, which is the undisputed king of packers in Blender. So once we've packed our UVs, okay, we should export it again because uh, I forgot to do that uh, that time. So let's just export these two again. And I like to use Marmoset for baking my normals. So... In Marmoset Toolbag, what I will do quickly, just to show you uh, how this would work, uh, you'd bring in the quick loader, um, you bring in a baker, sorry, and then you go down to the quick loader, you load in your um, object, click preview, okay, and then we'll just call this bake, okay, and we can do that for ambient occlusion as well, and click bake, and click preview, and then we've got the bake happening there and as you can see it's done a pretty good job of getting all of the details in here just make sure if you're using um more than one texture set um or multiple objects that you um tick the button uh that is for that so if you've got more than one texture sets for example like you wanted to separate one object from another so there's no bleeding or artifacts in that regard make sure you press that now back in blender um that's pretty much it um i hope some of you find this useful i know that there's been quite a lot of downloads and a few good reviews so i know that people are using it and and finding it useful so um once again 
Cyber Sale with Blender Market, November 24 to 27. Please come and uh, join in if you want to. And I'll leave it at that. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.